Hi, welcome to the video on Ohm's Law. Um, so in this video, we're going to finish uh, chapter 27 and then talk about energy and power. So one section from chapter 28. And we'll hold off on uh, talking about Kirchhoff's rules until the next video. So uh, last time we talked about the relationship between current density J and the electric field E. Uh, so they're related via the conductivity sigma. Um, so we can rewrite this. So current density is current free unit area. So we can rewrite J that way. Uh, we can rewrite the conductivity as one over the resistivity. So one over rho, uh, and then the electric field strength. So really, the this is a vector equation true at every point in space. But when we start talking about the current, we're talking about the whole current over the whole wire. So it's no longer a local equation. We kind of have to get rid of the, the vector sign. Um, we can also, so uh, where we're going with Ohm's law is we want to describe things in terms of the potential difference. This is more so what we have access to, right? If you took a wire, you're going to hook it up to a battery where we know the delta V of the battery. Right? We don't know the electric field right away. So we'd like to write this in terms of uh, potential difference. So the way we can do that is that, uh, so we have to remember that uh, electric field, remember, was volts per meter, or the potential difference divided by a length of the wire. Um, so, you know, for the same, if this is nine volts, you know, the nine volts could be spread out over one meter, it could be spread out over one centimeter. If it's only spread out over one centimeter, that's a much bigger electric field, because nine volts per one centimeter is a lot bigger than nine volts per one meter. Um, okay, so let's let's plug that. So this means that what we can plug in for E is delta V over L. Uh, so let's plug that in here. We have current divided by area. So we're going to rewrite this formula as delta V equals something times uh, I times the current. And that something for a wire looks like it's rho times L over area. Okay, and we're going to call this the resistance of that wire. So delta V across the wire is equal to the resistance of the wire times I. Uh, so this is a more general formula called Ohm's law, delta V equals I R. Um, but I'm, I'm actually going to write it, I'm going to rewrite it a different way. I'm going to write it this way. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm laughing because uh, your book writes it this way. A lot of other books write it as delta V equals something. And I'm going to write it the last way, R equals delta V over I. There's a lot of different ways you can write it. Uh, this is actually the definition of resistance. So resistance is a new thing we're talking about. Um, so again, this is this is sort of keeping track of the the causal dependence. So, so you, what what you do with a wire is that you apply a potential difference delta v, and then you can measure how much current you get out of that. Uh, you measure the i. So then you just take the ratio of those two two things, delta v divided by i, and that gives you the resistance of the um, object that you're trying to run current through by, by applying that potential difference. So as you might suspect, the bigger the resistance, the less current you get. So imagine we're going to hook up a bunch of things to a 9-volt battery. Uh, if a lot of current goes through that device, that means it has a low resistance. Right? This thing is on the denominator. But if you don't get very much current out of it, you can have a high resistance device. So this is telling you what, what we mean by resistance. Uh, the units of resistance are volts divided by amps. Uh, so Looking right here, one volt divided by one amp is what we're defining to be one ohm. This is the units of resistance. So one ohm, we use the, the symbol capital omega, the Greek letter capital omega, um, to signify ohms. So one volt divided by one amp equals new unit, new SI unit, one ohm. Uh, and this is called, so rearranging this formula in various ways is called Ohm's law. Um, so your book rewrites it as this, or you might see it as delta V equals IR. A lot of other books write it this way, uh, Ohm's law. So really, it's a definition of resistance. And then this is saying how potential difference is related to current. It's, it's related via this resistance. Um, so what you can do is you can plot. So uh, what you have control over is delta V. You can hook up any object to a bunch of different batteries, a bunch of different delta V values, and keep track of how much current you get going through the device. So for some devices, you uh, this this relationship wouldn't be linear. So for example, a diode doesn't allow uh, current one way, but it does allow a lot of current, and you don't even need much potential difference for it to go uh, the other way. So a diode is not linear here. Uh, other objects, like a light bulb, maybe you 
you don't apply much potential difference and you get a, a big current right away and that starts to level off as, as the light bulb really heats up and you apply a bigger and bigger potential difference and you don't get much more current out of it. So the resistance of these two objects is changing. If you have an object though that is a straight line, both, both directions, uh, this is uh, a special kind of device where R is constant. So if R is constant for the device, it's called an ohmic device or a resistor. Uh, so we call this a resistor or an ohmic device. Really, we just say that the device is ohmic. Resistor is, is a, um, a lot of things can act like a resistor. Uh, a resistor is kind of an ideal case where it's it, it's only doing this. It's only uh, dissipating energy, as we'll, we'll talk about later in the video. Um, but yeah, the R value being constant is a special kind of thing that doesn't have to be true for all objects is, is the point. So Ohm's law, th this Ohm's law is, is by definition true because it's a definition of resistance. Ohm's law says that V is proportional to I for special cases. Like if R is constant, then delta V is proportional to I. And that that's called Ohm's law. It, so it's it's saying a lot of things. It's a definition of resistance. It's saying a proportionality, but the proportionality only works for some devices. Um, so you'll see on the left, it looks like for this example problem, these these lines, it looks like they could fall on a straight line. Uh, so it looks like we will say that that object is is ohmic, and then actually calculate the resistance. So the resistance that there, there's only a well defined value of resistance if it's the same for all all uh, delta v values. Uh, okay, so and your book does makes this point also. You know, straight line, you can calculate a single value resistance. Okay, uh, so now going into um, a circuit diagram. Um, oh, your book describes what I was talking about with diode versus resistor. Um, okay, now we're going to start drawing uh, circuit diagrams that sort of look something like this. So there's two things that I want to bring up right here. Um, so if we have a resistor, it has some value of resistance that we label with R. And the symbol, we have a circuit uh, diagram for this. It's sort of a zigzag line. Um, you got to be careful because we're going to do this later on in the course where it looks like a coil. These are like zigzag, zigzag. You got to have sharp corners for these. This is a resistor. Um, so this is a new circuit element. Is this Tor? And this is an EMF source. So there's some value E for the voltage uh, across those terminals. Um, when we draw a circuit diagram like this, we're assuming all of the resistance is here and not in the wires. So in general, when we have a circuit, we connect things with wires. The wires have some resistance themselves, which we actually uh, have a formula for the resistance of the wires. So one thing I glossed over before uh, is that this value, so this value right here, the rho L over A is the resistance of a wire. Rho times L over A. So rho is the resistivity of the wire, L is the length of the wire, and A is the cross-sectional area of the wire. So get, if you know what kind of material you have, you can look up the rho value, and then for a particular wire, you can calculate the resistance. A lot of wires that you use for circuits have pretty low values of resistance, like one ohm or or less than that. Um, so for those cases, uh, a lot of times the things that you're hooking up your wires to have much bigger resistances. And so you can ignore, we're going to ignore any resistance in these wires. So if, if we only had wires connecting the battery, if you took a wire and you could connect it to the two ends of the battery, you would have a very low value of resistance uh, and you would have a very big current. You would We call that a short. Um, a very big value of resistance and that the wire is going to heat up. So we'll see that, that there's a lot of energy transferred and you're kind of depleting the battery very, very quickly. So you don't want to do that. So we don't like circuit diagrams that look like this because uh, we don't want a really small resistance connected across a, a battery that will kind of ruin the battery. So in general, we have very low resistance wires we take as ideal and then hooked up to a resistor with some value of resistance. So this is a this is a more common circuit diagram that we'll see. So we're ignoring the resistance of the wires. Right, we have the resistor R. Um, so th this is what we mean by ideal wire. 
the ideal wire has uh, zero resistance and it's very small compared to anything we're hooking it up to. So that's an okay thing. Uh, resistors are poor conductors. So they're conductors in that they're, they'll still allow um, uh, current to go through them, right? If you had an insulator, it just kind of, in, insulators have such values of resistance, such large values of resistances, there's basically zero current that they can get through. Resistors have some value that it's controlling the whole resistance of the circuit. Um, so it's, it's pretty big in that sense, but it's small enough that some measurable current can get through. Okay, so like a light bulb uh, would be an example of, um, so I, I mentioned before, like a light bulb can have a changing resistance value. So sometimes your book assumes that they're uh, just, they just have a constant value of resistance. Um, so you kind of have to infer from context whether we're treating the resistance as constant or not. Uh, and then insulators, you know, this is the air between that. So we're connecting them. We're sh everything else, you know, is a is a insulator. Um, so anything we're not connecting this to, there's air or an insulator in between, and we just, we can just totally ignore it as not part of the circuit. Um, so we're splitting this into like zero resistance, infinite resistance, and then the value of resistance that we care about, or you know, that we can keep that we're going to keep track of and put it in the um, um, circuit diagram. Uh, when we so this is another picture of the same circuit that I just drew above. Um, so this is the battery, uh, the wires, and then hooked up to the resistor. Um, so we can keep track of voltage voltages across the two circuit elements. If there's no resistance along the wire, so delta V for the wire is equal to I, the the one current that's that exists in the entire circuit times the resistance of the wire. So if this is zero, and no matter the value of I, it's not gonna be infinitely big, but if we're treating the resistance of the wire as zero, then there's no voltage drop across the wire. So if we were to, uh, if we were to plot, you know, we're gonna go around this, this uh, um, circuit. So we're gonna start like right here and go around this way. So we're just, with our finger, we're gonna go around the circuit and keep track of voltage changes. As we just go along the wire, there's no drop in voltage, but there's a large value of the potential difference, you know, connected to the, the positive terminal of the battery and then a low value. And as we go across the resistor, we lose that voltage. As we go to the right in that diagram across the resistor, we lose that voltage. And then we get to this end. So this is the end. Looks like this is end. So start and end. And then the battery will increase the voltage back to the starting value, right? As we go, you know, from end back to start through through the through the battery. So no voltage drop across the ideal wire, voltage drop across the resistor. And for the resistor, you can again use Ohm's law, V equals IR, to figure out what the uh, what the current is. So a lot of times we know the resistance value, we know the potential difference of the battery terminals, and we can use that to solve for the current. Uh, that's it for this chapter. What, one small thing from the next chapter. So in a lot of other books, they, they talk about this uh, right after Ohm's law. Uh, we can also keep track of energy. Um, so for these two identical bulbs, we can just replace this with a single resistor. So let's just say those two bulbs are the single resistor and connected to the battery. Um, we're going to keep track of energy um, coming from the battery here and then going dissipated by the resistor. Okay, so, so let's start with the, the simplest case where we just have the simplest possible circuit here with the involving a resistor. Um, so we have the EMF and then the resistor. So power, if you remember from uh, your mechanics class, power is energy per unit time. So the battery is, is always supplying uh, energy it's converting from chemical energy and converting it into electrical energy. So there, there's always some energy being uh, supplied by the battery. So the more time you you're, you have the circuit connected, the more energy is involved. So a lot of times we like to talk about power because that's just the that's just the value that it doesn't depend on how long the circuit's been running. And remember, power is in watts. So energy divided by time is power. Uh, joules per second are the SI units of power, and that's watts. Joule, one joule divided by one second is one watt capital W. The power supplied by a battery is this. So in this circuit, the current is going to, uh, so this is at high potential, this is at low potential, uh, and the current is going to be going this way through the resistor, this way 
this way, this way. So this is the current. A lot of times we just connect them like this. So current in that circuit is going in the clockwise direction. Whenever the current is going this way, uh, the, the current is being supplied by the battery. Whenever it's going in that direction, that means energy is coming from the battery. So this is the power delivered by an EMF. As long as the current is going in the direction that the battery is trying to generate current, then energy is leaving the battery. Uh, and this is the rate at which the energy is leaving the battery is. Uh, current times uh, voltage difference. And the voltage difference across the battery is E. So sometimes you'll see power as this formula. Sometimes you'll see it as IV. It's the same thing, right? E for a battery, V for a battery is the same thing. This is, so a lot of times battery is written this way. And this is the power uh, dissipated by a resistor. Uh, so where is this energy going? The energy that's supplied by the battery. The battery is giving energy to the circuit. It, it, it's, it's supplying the, the current. As the current goes through the resistor, it heats up and it dissipates the energy as heat. And the amount of energy per unit time that the resistor dissipates um, this energy is the same as the power delivered by the battery. So these two things are equal, but the, the direction of energy flow is, is a little different, right? The battery is giving energy to the circuit and the resistor is taking it away. Um, so your, for, your book writes down later, uh, so another way of talking about the voltage across the resistor, P equals IV, but V equals IR. So you can also write this as I squared R, or you could also write this as V squared over R, where V is the, the potential difference across the resistor. Right. We couldn't write these formulas for the battery because there is no, we're, we're not talking about the resistance. There is no resistance to the battery in the ideal case. Um, okay. So uh, Ohm's law question. Um, so Ohm's law is, so we start off with Ohm's law is delta V. And so for this, it looks like this is a constant value. There's some resist, this looks like we have a resistor. Um, and the resistance was defined to be the ratio uh, delta V divided by I. So this is just a rearrangement of Ohm's law, V equals IR, delta V equals IR. A lot of times we'll, sometimes just because we're being lazy, we write V, but it's really a delta V across the terminals of that device. Um, so we can use actually any two uh, delta V values. It looks like maybe for three amps, it's about three volts, or sorry, three milliamps, it's about three volts. So uh, just estimating from the graph, it looks like three volts divided by three milliamps. Uh, milli on the bottom, 10 to the minus three on the denominator is 10 to the plus three on the numerator. So it looks like this is a thousand in SI units and a volt divided by an amp is an ohm. So the resistance of this uh, device where we see the, the data points is 1000 ohms. Right? And it's a resistor because the resistance value is constant because it, the, this, this plot has is a straight line. Uh, through the origin, it looks like. All right. 